Prophets and Kings chapter 38 Light through darkness The dark years of destruction and dearth marking the end of the kingdom of Judah would have brought despair to the stoutest heart had it not been for the encouragements in the prophetic utterances of God's messengers. Through Jeremiah in Jerusalem, through Daniel in the court of Babylon, through Ezekiel on the banks of Chebar, the Lord in mercy made clear His eternal purpose and gave assurance of His willingness to fulfill to His chosen people the promises recorded in the writings of Moses. That which He had said He would do for those who should prove true to Him, He would surely bring to pass. The word of God liveth and abideth forever. In the days of the wilderness wandering, the Lord had made abundant provision for His children to keep in remembrance the words of His law. After the settlement in Canaan, the divine precepts were to be repeated daily in every home. They were to be written plainly upon the doorposts and gates and spread upon memorial tablets. They were to be set to music and chanted by young and old. Priests were to teach these holy precepts in public assemblies, and the rulers of the land were to make them their daily study. Meditate therein day and night, the Lord commanded Joshua concerning the book of the law, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The writings of Moses were taught by Joshua to all Israel. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. This was in harmony with the express command of Jehovah, providing for a public rehearsal of the words of the book of the law every seven years during the Feast of Tabernacles. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, the spiritual leaders of Israel had been instructed, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. Had this counsel been heeded through the centuries that followed, how different would have been Israel's history. Only as a reverence for God's holy word was cherished in the hearts of the people, could they hope to fulfill the divine purpose. It was regard for the law of God that gave Israel strength during the reign of David, and the earlier years of Solomon's rule. It was through faith in the living word that reformation was wrought in the days of Elijah and of Josiah. And it was to these same scriptures of truth, Israel's richest heritage, that Jeremiah appealed in his efforts toward reform. Wherever he ministered, he met the people with the earnest plea, Hear ye the words of this covenant words which would bring them a full understanding of God's purpose to extend to all nations a knowledge of saving truth. In the closing years of Judah's apostasy, the exhortations of the prophets were seemingly of but little avail. And as the armies of the Chaldeans came for the third and last time to besiege Jerusalem, hope fled from every heart. Jeremiah predicted utter ruin, and it was because of his insistence on surrender that he had finally been thrown into prison. But God left not to hopeless despair the faithful remnant who were still in the city. Even while Jeremiah was kept under close surveillance by those who scorned his messages, there came to him fresh revelations concerning heaven's willingness to forgive and to save, which have been an unfailing source of comfort to the church of God from that day to this. Laying fast hold on the promises of God, Jeremiah, by means of an acted parable, illustrated before the inhabitants of the fated city his strong faith in the ultimate fulfillment of God's purpose for his people. In the presence of witnesses and with careful observance of all necessary legal forms, he purchased for seventeen shekels of silver 
an ancestral field situated in the neighboring village of Anathoth. From every human point of view, this purchase of land and territory already under the control of the Babylonians appeared to be an act of folly. The prophet himself had been foretelling the destruction of Jerusalem, the desolation of Judea, and the utter ruin of the kingdom. He had been prophesying a long period of captivity in faraway Babylon. Already advanced in years, he could never hope to receive personal benefit from the purchase that he had made. However, his study of the prophecies that were recorded in the scriptures had created within his heart a firm conviction that the Lord purposed to restore to the children of the captivity their ancient possession of the land of promise. With the eye of faith, Jeremiah saw the exiles returning at the end of the years of affliction and reoccupying the land of their fathers. Through the purchase of the Anathoth estate, he would do what he could to inspire others with the hope that brought so much comfort to his own heart. Having signed the deeds of transfer and secured the counter signatures of witnesses, Jeremiah charged Baruch, his secretary, Take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. So discouraging was the outlook for Judah at the time of this extraordinary transaction, that immediately after perfecting the details of the purchase and arranging for the preservation of the written records, the faith of Jeremiah, unshaken though it had been, was now sorely tried. Had he, in his endeavor to encourage Judah, acted presumptuously, in his desire to establish confidence in the promises of God's word, had he given ground for false hope? Those who had entered into covenant relationship with God had long since scorned the provisions made in their behalf. Could the promises to the chosen nation ever meet with complete fulfillment? Perplexed in spirit, bowed down with sorrow over the sufferings of those who had refused to repent of their sins, the prophet appealed to God for further enlightenment concerning the divine purpose for mankind. Ah, oh, Lord God, he prayed, Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give every one according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name as it is this day, and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders, and with a strong hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with great terror, and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar's armies were about to take the walls of Zion by storm. Thousands were perishing in a last desperate defense of the city. Many thousands more were dying of hunger and disease. The fate of Jerusalem was already sealed. The besieging towers of the enemy's forces were already overlooking the walls. Behold the mounts, the prophet continued in his prayer to God. They are come unto the city to take it and the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it, because of the sword, and of the famine, and of the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, Buy thee the field for money, and take witnesses, for the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. The prayer of the prophet was graciously answered. The word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, in that hour of distress, 
when the faith of the messenger of truth was being tried as by fire, was, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? The city was soon to fall into the hand of the Chaldeans. Its gates and palaces were to be set on fire and burned. But notwithstanding the fact that destruction was imminent and the inhabitants of Jerusalem were to be carried away captive, nevertheless, the eternal purpose of Jehovah for Israel was yet to be fulfilled. In further answer to the prayer of his servant, the Lord declared concerning those upon whom his chastisements were falling, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever, for the good of them, and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, and they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land, assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus saith the Lord, Like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof ye say, It is desolate without man or beast, it is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidences, and seal them, and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, and in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the valley, and in the cities of the south, for I will cause their captivity to return, saith the Lord. In confirmation of these assurances of deliverance and restoration, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord the Maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be in habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. 
Thus was the Church of God comforted in one of the darkest hours of her long conflict with the forces of evil. Satan had seemingly triumphed in his efforts to destroy Israel. But the Lord was overruling the events of the present, and during the years that were to follow, His people were to have opportunity to redeem the past. His message to the church was, Fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. In the glad day of restoration, the tribes of divided Israel were to be reunited as one people. The Lord was to be acknowledged as ruler over all the families of Israel. They shall be my people, he declared. Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Humbled in the sight of the nations, those who once had been recognized as favored of heaven above all other peoples of the earth were to learn in exile the lesson of obedience so necessary for their future happiness. Until they had learned this lesson, God could not do for them all that He desired to do. I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished, he declared in explanation of his purpose to chastise them for their spiritual good. Yet those who had been the object of his tender love were not forever set aside. Before all the nations of earth, he would demonstrate his plan to bring victory out of apparent defeat, to save rather than to destroy. To the prophet was given the message, he that scattereth Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their souls shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah, and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice, and mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Judah itself, and in all the cities thereof together, husbandmen, and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The End of Chapter 38 
of Prophets and Kings. <laughs>